OK, so uh, I'm John Hobbs. Like I said, I work at PAC. Um, and this talk is about um, a massive screw up I did. And it's called, uh, I broke the app, now what? So um, we recently had a, a big for us release. Um, we're not a large company. Uh, there's only two developers. I'm the only one who does mobile. Uh, and I also do some web. And I do all the systems administration stuff. And it's just one of those things where it all piles on. So finally getting this out the door was a big deal for us. Um, and it, it added a whole bunch of stuff. It was our first big feature bump. Um, and uh, it had taken, it had, it had blown past its deadline. <coughs> uh, the, what is it, uh, Douglas Adams. My favorite thing about deadlines is the sound of them whooshing by. <laughs> Did that a lot. Uh, so we, we got it out really fast uh, once it was ready. Um, so you know we're all excited, and then um, you know Crashlytics starts counting up all these these crashes, and uh, <coughs> and so uh, that's you know a very uh, sad time for you, uh, well for me mostly. Um, uh, and if you don't have Crashlytics installed, I guess this is item zero: install Crashlytics if you're doing uh, app dev. So um, the oh no moment is that we had sent. <laughs> everybody who had authenticated with the iOS app this email, uh, and then that's when all the crashes started pouring in. So we just told everybody to go download the updated broken version of the app. Um, and what it was, I guess, just briefly, is that uh, we did in testing internally, um, but all of our accounts had multiple dogs. But if your account had a single dog, it would um, crash when you went to go try to post. It would go to the wrong view. Um, Storyboards are evil, by the way, but <laughs> run time. Uh, anyway, uh, and so, you know, the oh no moment, um, but, uh, you know, don't panic is kind of the, the next step, I guess, the first thing to do. So number one uh, that we did was uh, get the word out. Um, you know, there's no point in hiding from the fact that your app is crashing for a lot of people. Um, so we, we were proactive and we, you know, we, we tweeted and posted on Facebook. Um, an overlooked thing is uh, we changed our app description or the, you know, the change log notes, uh, what you can edit, um, to say, hey, maybe don't download this version. Uh, and then we put a big, uh, we had a blog post that we linked to in that email. And so we figured we can intercept people from that blog post um, if they uh, see this at the top of the the um, blog post. So you know, after my heart has been crushed and we've told everybody it's broken, don't download it. Um, I guess uh, one and a half here is stop getting the word out. So uh, you know, we went back and kind of retconned our tweets, and that never happened. The the uh, uh, the announcements, I guess. So second thing was consider pulling the app, uh, pushing the um, release date way forward in the future so that it stops being available for download. Um, we didn't do this. Um, I'm not sure why, but we didn't. <laughs> so uh, there's that. Uh, that is something to consider, though. If it's, if it's a really bad, um, bad crash, uh, then you can, can do that. Um, step three. What? That is your only option. Can't roll back. Right, you cannot roll back. That's a that is something about the App Store. You cannot roll back to a previous build or previous anything. It's it's they like vectors. Um, so step three, uh, fix it. Uh, there's a really simple fix. <coughs> Just get the right uh, segue name in the right place. Uh, step four, expedited review. <coughs> um, so. There's this process called expedited review, and they'll do it for um, really bad bugs like this, or they'll do it if you have a time constraint. So if you were making an app for a conference or something that has a set date and it's coming up and the review is not through, you do expedited review, and they'll, they'll bump it up. Um, it's a little hard to find if you don't know to look for the word expedited review. Um, you know, like expedited wasn't the first thing that came to mind uh, for me. So it took a little bit of Googling, but we found it. Uh, it's basically a form you fill out on there. And uh, well, it, is, it is a form. It's not basically a form. Uh, <laughs> and you know, you give them the, the reason in, and how to reproduce the bug on the old build. And then uh, you pray that they expedite your review, uh, which they did for us. And so. Hmm? 
So step five. Step five is pray, yeah, yeah, or five or four B, <laughs> uh, pray, uh, and then don't sleep a whole lot. <coughs> and so for us, um, they did it within. Uh, it was under thirty hours. I mean, it was it was fast. When they accept your expedited review, they they make it happen. Um, so step five is once you've got your nice build out there, you you pretend like very little changed, and you undo that things. Um, this was something that. I wanted to point out specifically, um, all our API calls, uh, I make sure to pass um, headers for the version and the, and the platform. And uh, that does multiple things on the, the API side, um, pushes to uh, Graphite uh, so we can chart it. And it also pushes to a, um, a set so we know, like a read a set. So we know which user IDs have used which version. And so once the new version was at the App Store, I pulled all the user IDs and did a big BCC email um, to each of those users, uh, just saying, like from my account, just saying, like, hey, it's broken, it's fixed, sorry, you know, if you have any concerns. Um, and it was really nice. Uh, people didn't reply I'm angry. Most people were like, okay, or, you know, very few replies came in, but most of them were like, you know, chill, bro. So I do this in all of the apps I wrote, even when I was here at CRI, we always did this style of thing. Mm -hmm. And you could build in a, like, we built in a message in the client that basically would check, like, the server would respond with, there is an updated version. Right. And we had, like, a multi flag, like, we would stop, like, we won't even, like, our API won't communicate with you any longer no. because you're that old. Yeah. Like, there's a security <coughs> issue, there's whatever. Did you pop, a, like, an alert? Yeah, popped alert. Okay. It just said, hey, there's a new version. It would just send you right to the App Store to be able to download yeah. the new version. And then the other message was, hey, there's a new version. Would you like to update now? Right. Because they could choose yes or no because. Kind of like if you do, if you do Crashlytics <coughs> beta and all yeah. the people, when they open your app, they get the, the prompt for the new version. Yes, yeah, <coughs> something to add. Hmm. So no, what this would yeah. do is this, yeah. that specific API that failed, you know, that specific situation, you can find that specific situation. You can say, hey, this isn't working right now. Yeah, we mm -hmm. did which, would, which would be nice. Yeah. Rather than crashing the app, yeah. you, know, you can explicitly, possibly, do it for this specific situation. Yeah, that's right. We did it on, we like, every time the app would start up, it would send, like, an app status message mm. every time. Yeah. And then that would return that, that information to the app to say, but the most important, I guess the most important point is whatever version of the code you do, put it in before you have the broken version because it doesn't yeah. do you any good after. Yes. Yes. Um, so, yeah. Um, step six, don't let it happen again. Um, uh, so I guess it was a testing failure on our part. Um, we, because we were rushed, we just tested it internally. Um, we didn't push it out to a small beta group or anything. Uh, which we had, like we had a group of, of beta users that we used on the first release, uh, but we, we were just like, ah, it's fine, ship it. Um, so thank you, ship it culture. Uh, so don't let it happen again is that we now have, um, you know, some, some rules in place that uh, should help prevent this, have a, a wider pool of testing stuff than just uh, the five people you work with. It does also seem to be that Apple limits Expedited reviews. If you request an oh, expedited really? review too much, they'll stop expediting your review. Good to know. Several times in a row. If you do it, they usually allow it. If they do it a lot, though, in a row, on releases, they usually think that's part of your process. Mm. And then they're like, wait a second. This should not be part of your process to expedite every time. Yeah. You've got a problem. <laughs> they, yeah. They're threatening you. <laughs> they won't include the next one, is yeah. what they say. Yeah. I'm already sure. We, I think we got one expedited review rejected. Before. Yeah, we got it one rejected, and then we that was the one for travel and transport yeah. that we said we can't report this. This problem is actually your issue that your build system wonked up our oh, yeah. our that binary, was, like, weird. and they refused to believe that they wonked up our binary. <laughs> and then we sent them like four or five other people that were online that like, had the same problem. Release the same exact yeah, we were like, again. We, yeah, we're sending <laughs> the exact same thing. Just re-release it. It'll work. And they're like, No, it won't. And we're like, Yeah, it will. <laughs> no, it won't. No, yes, it will. And they finally said, Bind. I think just because we wouldn't let them alone, and they did, and everything worked. <laughs> So you guys are saying I'm not the only one who screws this up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Sure. That makes me feel better. I've done it. So, uh, I, I, I don't know. I found out today that uh, people who have Apple Watch apps mm -hmm. can't use TestFlight. 
Oh, yeah. Really? Because it would actually show up on your device as, oh, I can download this app, and you can't because the watch isn't available. Huh. Really turned off. <laughs> well, that's all right anyway. People shouldn't be using test flight anyway. I was like, wow, I see this. <laughs> Go to hockey app. <laughs> So. Crash Lytics. Crash Lytics. Is it yeah. actually any better? Uh, but get on top. Of isn't Crash Lytics owned by Test Flight? So wasn't that? No, they're owned, they're owned by Twitter. Crash they got oh, bought by that's Twitter. Twitter bought them. Okay. Right. Yeah. So but Twitter will slowly start cloning your app and then right. push you out of the market. So <laughs> that's their plan, I think. I don't know. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You still have to, yeah. Test flight will actually gives you more space. They do like a thousand, right? Yeah. Whereas you'd have to, yeah. I don't, I don't think uh, test flight, if you're doing an external user, registers the UIDs and the provisioning profile. Hmm. It actually just gives you a list of a thousand and doesn't put it in the provisioning. Yes, yeah, so you get more if you use crash yeah. by a little bit. Well, well not, not if you don't use crash list, if you use test flight. That's mm. test flight. So yeah. Yeah. If you use the enterprise account, you have <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, not legally, you can. You are not allowed to distribute that outside well, of yeah. your own company. It's supposed to be still your test group. And all yeah. That. Yeah. So but if, not, anyway. if you don't own the devices or own the people, yeah. if you're not supposed <laughs> to distribute it's got to be contract. Well, that well, got real. Yes, that's the easy way to do it, actually, which is what we've done for a couple of clients. We put the enterprise build and a distribute build, and we just use our enterprise build for, for testing. All right, y'all ready? I'm Taylor Kerensky. Uh, I've been coming to Mobile Meetup for seven months, eight months now. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about Cocoa Pods. Uh, it's only an iOS thing, unfortunately, but I'm, I have recently learned that there is something similar for Android. Um, but basically, I'm, I'm a freelance developer right now um, while, I'm in, while I'm in school. Um, I also work for a local startup here called Blazefly. Um, technically, the CTO of a, a very small company called iTrap, and we're trying to change the face of uh, trap shooting for uh, team, mostly team sports. And then, uh, obviously, I'm always looking for, for new opportunities and uh, new connections. Um, so today, basically, I'm just going to run through how to install Cocoa Pods. It should only take like 15 minutes um, when you're actually doing it on your computer. So it's really simple. Um, but basically, it's, it's a dependency manager for Xcode. So it works with uh, iOS, um, OS X, and uh, Objective-C, and Swift now. Really simple way to add what I would consider like plugins to your project. Um, they call them pods. Um, and basically, they're just open source GitHub libraries that people have uploaded um, specifically for iOS. And it just it creates a simple way for you to add those to your project without having to drag in the source files. And every time you have to update, manage all that stuff, it's kind of a pain. And then there's, there's thousands of libraries available on CocoaPods right now. So you could find pretty much anything you're looking for. Um, so I was going to show you what, at least on their website, what, uh, what a pod looks like. Uh, basically, it's just CocoaPods.org. And you just search whatever you want. So this is one that I used recently. Um, you see in all the fancy new social medias, you pull the refresh on the table view, and it does the spinner and everything. And there's tons of pods already set up to do all kinds of stuff. You can customize them, change images, change your message, change what happens when, when you actually uh, pull down the, the refresh button. But <clears throat> as you can see, there's just tons of different things. Um, and some of them are you know, 0 0.01, and some of them are, are more senior. So you just kind of got to go through and find what fits with what you need, but I um, thought I'd show you an example of that. <coughs> uh, so it's very easy to integrate. You just need a little bit of knowledge about the terminal. Um, but once it's installed on your computer, you can use pods in any of your Xcode projects. Uh, basically, to install Cocoa Pods, you run this one line of code in terminal. And it'll install Gem, which is a Ruby thing, I, I think. Um, and it'll it'll install it in the background. It's like package manager. Yeah, it's so you're using Cocoa a Pods for Ruby. Yeah. It's Cocoa Pods okay. for Ruby, so you're actually using a package manager to for a package, package manager. manager. <laughs> that is. Exactly, that's yeah. what yep. I'm saying. I install Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> and then 
I yep. can jam install CocoaPod so I can CocoaPod install something else. <laughs> <laughs> it's very meta. So it's su super, super easy. Um, so to actually add it to your project, make sure your project is closed um, so it's not, Xcode's not open. Navigate to your project folder directory in terminal and then basically just run these two lines of code. Pod init adds a, all the pod structure and then uh, it adds a pod, the pod install adds a pod file which is basically where you just reference the pods that you see on Cocoa Pods, and uh, it'll build your whole project for you. Then you go back into your project folder and open it as a workspace. So instead of just the X project file, it'll, they'll have a workspace project in there. You just double click it and it opens and then you'll see at the bottom there's actually a, uh, basically just a, an added project that has pods inside of it. Um, and then you, you expand that and it shows you the pod file um, and then um, basically you can add pods for release and for test in there and there's there's a couple other things you can set like your platform standard is iOS 8 or <coughs> iOS 6 or whatever it's gonna be and then this is an example of what one of those lines looks like so whatever your pods called and then whatever version you want to run um, you just put that in there then you go ahead and save your project and close it again open up terminal navigate to your project folder run a pod install again and it'll you'll, it'll say a bunch of stuff analyzing dependencies and It'll install the ones that you want it to install, and it'll remove any ones that you have removed from your pod file automatically. Then you, uh, then you open up your project again, and bam, there you go. You got all your frameworks installed and everything for that particular pod, and then you just do a regular import <coughs> at the top of any header files that you want to use it on. Is there an Xcode plugin for Cocoa Pods? There is. Oh, is there? I haven't done anything like in the actual Xcode with Cocoa Pods, um, other than just the, the file part of it. Um, but so far what I've found is most Cocoa Pods have good documentation, some of them do not, but a lot of them also give a link directly to their GitHub site, so you can download like test projects and stuff that they have on there to reference from. Um, so now you have successfully added Cocoa Pods to your project, you can search for all, all kinds of pods. Um, and like uh, for, for Blazefly, we have it installed in, in some of our pods. We um, commit to version control because we have modified them on our own. And some of them we just keep standard how they are and we don't, uh, we don't update them. We'll just let Cocoa Pods handle that. Can you, um, can you Cocoa Pod write from a Git repository? Or do they have to be a registered Cocoa Pod? I think you have you to, know. like, I, I don't know, actually. Uh, yeah, so like we, there was a bug in GPU image. And um, we, you can reference a GitHub URL, and so then I, c I can fork it, and then actually you can fork your own like okay. right. version of it, right? Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I do, like an Angular when I yeah. Bower. So. Makes sense. And then you can also develop your own Cocoa Pods if you want to. Um, I didn't. I haven't. I haven't done this yet, so I'm not really familiar with it. But essentially, there's just. Uh, you create your project and then there's different command lines that you do to push your project up to Cocoa Pods. Um, and they just have a couple guidelines that you have to follow and stuff. But other than that, it's super simple. I, I've really enjoyed using it. It makes things just really quick. Um, we've done like image caching, pull to refresh, um, uh, all kinds of stuff like uh, AF, HTTP requests, all kinds of stuff like that. So I thought I'd, thought I'd just share that with you all. What, uh, do you uh, <coughs> licensing? Do do they vary, or do you see like MIT or? You know, I ha I guess I haven't really paid attention to that. But because Cocoa Pods provides it, I would guess. Cocoa Pods is just the package. Yeah, yeah manager. I don't know. I oh, and I don't mean the the package manager. I mean, like, hey, let's see. You use Cocoa Pods. I think if in you a click commercial through, project, it'll tell you, do you the have license. To, do you have to yeah, I think. So <laughs> you're not using Cocoa Pods in your in your project at all. So yeah, this like will show you and I'm up here. Individual pod. Right. Yeah. What was it? It's right there underneath. Oh, I see it there. Yeah, yeah. license yeah. right there. There you go. And it'll say and it'll actually, what it is. And MIT is um, good. It actually <laughs> That's a good license. Uh, Cocoa Pods <laughs> actually like concatenates all of the licenses of all your pods together, and then um, so you can show that in an about view hmm. or something. Okay. Right. I don't know where they bury it and where to reference it, but I know it right. does that for you if you cool. want. Cool. Any other questions? Oh, really old. <laughs> Why? He's going to tell them to get off the blog. Because we used to have to, well, go, to, yeah, but no, I mean, to go to GitHub and get our own. We used to go have to download. Well, no, I mean, it's just, when we started, we just 
this the, oh, obviously this is there for a reason, but it was really hard when you first got to Yep. Well, that's because, the, like, the library didn't even exist. Yeah, yeah so, so, so package I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so they, um, it works similar to Bower. Does it base your your semantic version off a tag, then? Off your git repo? There's, a, there's a pod spec file okay. that's part of publishing them, and I think that's where they, use they mark it. Yeah. But yeah, I don't sure know for sure. It looks Tag like seems reasonable. And you can, you can specify your own pod spec. So, like, I wanted to use a, a pod, I wanted to use an old version of a pod, and that pod spec was no longer available. I just credited it as a, uh, as a on, on GitHub, as a one of the little text files. And then I referenced that in my pod file. I was just curious, because uh, Bauer, Bauer's fun. Uh, <laughs> If, so we had a, a repo that we used, and the guy decided to go delete all his tags. <laughs> oh yeah, that's how I favorite some of his <coughs> That's really bad if, uh, if you're using Bower. So. You know what, over the last few days is when you fork someone else's repo, and then you Bower your own, your fork, and then every time you make a change, you have to like commit, rebuild your own, commit the build, then Bower update your own code. Like, if there was some way to streamline that whole process, like, that would be a lot nicer than, like, I don't know if there's a way to you kind just of, use the like, like get sub -module. Yeah, like, <laughs> well, yes, I guess I could probably just get sub -module get better, but I was trying yeah, to, like, just use the get link for the, whatever branch you're on, and until we're, until it's fairly stable, and then we can go from there. Because you know, you know it's not gonna change out from under you. That's true, yeah. Right, so you can just, you can actually go by commit hash. If you'd Which like. is what I do, right, I mean, like, I just have it setting to the, to master, but it's with you know yeah. Bowers picking up the most recent hash. But I keep having to like run it. But I guess that's probably better. It's just making a sub repo until I'm ready and it's stable. I'm just trying to think. Well, I'm bowering other components. I should probably bower my own as well. No idea. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> it bowers the same thing you know, for JavaScript. Okay, gotcha. Uh, like Cocoa Pods is for okay for iOS. Is there cool. a way to? I asked this question on. Is there a way to override one specific file and you still use the CocoaPod without modifying the CocoaPod? So you'd have to. You'd have to. You'd have to either. Have to either the pod, I guess you'd have to. Right. What it sounds like, you'd either have to create a, a new repository and point to that, or copy the code and yeah, modify that one file. On other package versions, <coughs> that's always what I do. I just fork it, make my change, and then yep. point it at my at my fork. Yep. Versus the original. It's probably best to just swizzle it all. We're gonna switch it all. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if you could add a category, that would work too. For the, uh, for well, the ones that you've used in your projects, yep. are they, the, do, you, do you feel like they're efficient? Do you find some that are kind of loaded? Yeah. Yes, there's definitely some that are like yeah. either just yeah. way too much or way too little for yeah. what you want. So you gotta kinda search around. Like yeah. I've, I've tried a couple different pull down refreshes, a couple different things right. like that. There's a, a website called Coco Control. Yes, uh, David was and showing me a, that. That's a nice, like, oh, yeah. visual so stuff. Like, it's got screenshots. Yeah, it's got, yeah, it's got yeah. that one has screenshots, but sometimes they don't have videos. As much stuff as Coco Pods okay. already, but yeah. Is it through the same package? <laughs> it's the same package manager, but it's okay. a separate, like, entity, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think, you, I think you install those just the same. Yeah. Um, they're just a different way to view them, basically. So, yeah. so did you, uh, when you look at the page, and then subclass it? I just didn't want to build one. Like that's a, that's the reason I started looking around. I didn't want to build my own pull the refresher. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. See, so that that's why. Yeah. Yeah. That like this uh, this pull the refresh that I use from uh, from the Coco Pod basically just adds like a header to the table view, and then it's like five lines of code and it has a delegate and then it just runs certain things when you want it to, so. Yeah, it's, uh, you control it? Okay. Android guy. Cool. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Oh, I gotta, gotta get David in the spotlight. So, uh, I'm David Corrado. Um, I already introduced myself. Um, I'm gonna give a talk on Charles Proxy. So, if you don't use any sort of proxies in your project, so basically, it's a way to like intercept um, communication um, and basically send it through this app. And basically, you can monitor all your network traffic You're and do <laughs> do lots of neat stuff with it. The the data. So um, you should definitely use it because it's really useful to be able to just go through all your data. You can see if you're doing really crazy requests that you didn't even know you were doing. Um, 
and it's just really useful to use. <laughs> so you definitely should look into this. Charles Proxy, uh, I'll, get, I'll actually get to that. So um, I'll go through the features of Charles Proxy. So, OK, so basically, these are some of the features from the Charles Proxy website. Um, so basically, it supports SSL proxying, pr SSL proxying, which is really nice, because basically, by default, the, the proxy uh, blocks all uh, HPS traffic. So basically what this does is it like puts a certificate in between you and the server so it like makes it so you can sniff all the traffic. It's, a, it's actually really sweet. Um, it's, man in the middle of taxi. Yeah. it's really sweet, but you have to approve it. You have to, you have to approve it and stuff like that. But, um, and you can do bandwidth throttling. So like, let's say you're running into a bug specific to really slow devices uh, or like slow connections. Uh, that's really useful. Um, and then um, this other stuff, Ajax debugging, uh, I'm not sure really. <coughs> and then uh, if you use f Flash, apparently it's useful for that. <laughs> um, so some really cool stuff is you can uh, repeat back request. So like I had an instance where a request was failing because I was like hitting my, my, the server like really hard with a whole bunch of requests. And then I wanted to know, is my request bad, or is um, is it just because I'm attacking my server too quickly? So I just repeated the request, and it actually just succe succeeded. So I knew that it was nothing wrong in my request. It was basically because I'm hitting the server too hard. I don't know if I actually not sure if it was an Android limitation or if it was the server limitation, but um, uh, the server was ret it was returning a header that said like .NET something. So I assume it was the server limitation, but. Uh, and then it's a, and then you can also edit your request. So this is really neat. So basically, you, like you can, <laughs> and you can set breakpoints. So basically, when you you can set a breakpoint on a specific request, and then you could say, hey, stop it when this request comes through, and then um, and then you can modify that request. So you could modify the request. So let's say you want to change your password to a correct password when you're going through or whatever. And then also when you get a response, let's say um, when you're logging in, you want to change your user ID to somebody else. You could do that. Uh, there's lots of neat, neat ways you could use this. It's really, really neat. You definitely need to use this. OK, so base, it supports Mac, Windows, and Linux. I've only used it on Mac, so I don't know um, if it's really great on Windows or Linux. But um, it's, it's the best on Mac. Everybody that uses Macs pretty much uses this. I don't think there's anything comparable. Um, I think Windows, they have Fiddler. so. I don't know if they have these equivalent uh, stuff to it. Does it? Is it? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you should definitely use Fiddler. I mean, use uh, Charles. <laughs> <A. laughs> Sorry, as a second. So you definitely use Charles on uh, Windows as well, I guess. But that's this, the most popular one. Is everybody uses Fiddler? So, um, so I just wanted. I don't have anything in specific that I was gonna um, demo. Basically, this is the. Um, this is uh, Charles. So basically, wh what I have it set to is I have it actually proxying from my phone. So every single re web, uh, web request that happens through my phone, you'll actually see on here. So it's actually it's nuts to just think about that, like the network request that happened on your phone, and it just it'll just show up on there. So like stuff that happens that you don't even know about, you can monitor that, and you can actually see what's like specifically what kind of data they're sending. Uh, some of this stuff is encrypted. Like even though you can decrypt the HTTPS, some of this stuff is encrypted. So, like some of this stuff you can't actually even look at. Like a lot of the Google stuff is encrypted. So, like in here, you the app developer should be self-encrypting their own data. Yeah, you probably should. Yeah. If you if you're using HTTPS, and you probably should also be verifying the the certificate is not a man in the middle. So you avoid a uh, man in the middle attacks like we're doing. But LinkedIn, is, LinkedIn isn't doing that? No, it's no, not. LinkedIn is, yeah. <laughs> but, but like, you know what? You know what? I would, I, I'm not going to recommend that to anybody because I like to be able to see the data. So <laughs> screw you guys that <laughs> worry about security. I like to be able to see the data. <laughs> so if you look at, um, I don't think any of this stuff will be secured. I think all this stuff is unsecured, but basically that's uh, some people like that you know are really good with the security will block this. But this is really neat though. So like you can like let's say you want to 
see how another app uses uh, their API. So you could actually just get all of like exactly how their API data works. Like a lot of this, I'm, I'm specifically demoing uh, Snapchat. Uh, so basically, all this data over here is, is my Snapchat uh, information. So basically, they use SC Analytics. So you can look at um, the analytics data, whatever they're sending to the server uh, with SC Analytics. Um, you can look at. Um, so this is this is their API. This feelings, it's so nice. I have no idea why they came up with that name. Maybe that's that original name, but basically this is their this is their request that they're sending to the server, and this is the response. Uh, so basically, you know, you can learn good patterns too to follow for if you're developing APIs. Like these are the patterns that they're following, or bad patterns, uh, I guess. Uh, but it's really interesting just to be able to comb through this data. So we, let's let's say I. Um, so basically, here's some of the settings. So I could set a, a breakpoint. Actually, I could just right click over here, and I could set a breakpoint in this API. So the next time the API goes through, I can modify it. So like, let's say I'm doing my own application, and I want to, I don't know, change my pictures to somebody else on my own application to, to just, you know, uh, to basically uh, do screenshots or something like that. You can use this, and like you could. Uh, and then it's also really useful for like if your server returns like relatively static data, and then you can modify your request to return um, data that that would be hard for the server to reproduce unless you change the database or something. So that's what we use a lot actually in my job is I actually just have JSON that I just throw in there as the response, and uh, that's a good way to test um, that your stuff still works. Um, so as of right now, you're looking at. Yeah. So, so the request that you're sending right now it has your lap long and the and the, the response. Is oh, that's a response. This is a response. Oh, okay. So the it's uh, interesting that they send you back the weather. I don't it's know send, what they it's use. The lat long too, though. I don't know what they use this. Send? Yeah. 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 And accuracy in meters. Yeah, I don't know what like if Snapchat uses the weather at all, but it's kind of interesting <laughs> that it returns. <laughs> It's kind of interesting. You, you can see, like, I guess they're figuring if you get a temperature that's really high, it's more likely to be a naked picture. <laughs> <laughs> so, something, something interesting um, is specifically with like Tinder, uh, I, I just use it to test stuff. I'm, I'm here. But, uh, <laughs> But 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 look at this. Oh yeah. It's look, this happens every like second. They they have a request happening every second to say to update something. I don't know how they got away with that. But like that's crazy. Like you're if you're looking at the screen, it's constantly doing some sort of communication like every second. That's nuts. Yeah, what's it, doing? It, it it does. It does. <laughs> I, I I I don't know. I actually actually don't. I actually don't know what it's doing. I think what it does is it actually returns back whether somebody actually matched with you or something. What's the request, what's the request, like? request yeah. like? Like it's kind of nuts. Like microphone data. <laughs> yeah. It's probably better. Uh oh, look they're looking at our request. Oh, it's just the right uh, request. We can we can, we can look at the raw data. The, the raw data is the headers and stuff. So like they might be sending something like this is basically my token. All the stuff other is generic, um, and then it's basically I think what they're doing is saying hey, basically it's it's a it's uh, I'm not right now. That's why it's checking. It's like seeing if you're actually yeah, on, their, yeah. on their app looking yeah, at it right now so they know, hey, this person is actually. Like, there's a way, there's a, they, there's a way to know when you're not. That's the, that's I, the nice thing I think mobile versus web. I can actually tell you you're not looking at this anymore. I think they probably got, like, they must be storing something internally and they, like, got, like, complaints that. That that when two people do something at exactly the same time, it doesn't work or something, and then yeah, but there are much better ways. Yes, to do it. <laughs> it's just like it's 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 kind of crazy, uh, and like let, in the other direction. let's let's no, it's no, it's really cool. Is like another thing is like uh, actually it's a oh, so this is an image request. So look at the response, and you could actually <laughs> nope. <laughs> So the cool thing, the cool, the cool thing is, is you can you can actually see the image. I think that's really neat. Is that you can actually see the image. So I think that's really neat. Um, 
<laughs> trying to like like it's just crazy like just combing. <laughs> this this is just somebody that's this is who's probably the person that's on my, f not somebody I match with. I don't know. I, I, I actually approve. I actually approve every single person on this app. I just hit okay. You know it's funny. I don't get a whole lot of matches. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But, but yeah. Uh, let me see if there's anything else interesting that I should go over. So, I think I kind of mentioned everything um, that's uh, big. You can monitor your own web requests. So. Uh, so like what you do is you turn on the, the Mac proxy right here. Oh, okay. So, so you set up like a, a SOX 5 or something on your phone to get it proxy? Uh, so now. the setup process to get it on your phone is it actually, what you do is you edit your, uh, I don't have, let's see if I have. So like here, here's how you do it on iOS, let's say, for example. So on iOS, you go to, you first set up, so your, um, you go into your settings. Where's Wi-Fi in here? General. 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 Oh, okay, 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 okay. So this is different. So on my f on my phone on Android, if you're doing an actual device, uh, I don't have it synced up to the screen. What you do is you um, go into your wireless settings. You actually choose your specific Wi-Fi connection. So my computer and my phone has to be on the same Wi-Fi connection. And also, uh, with my work, it's a little weird because uh, they don't allow you to like um, communicate between um, like computers uh, in, in my phone. So basically, uh, you, your, your networking needs to be set up so you communicate between, uh, which m they are by default. Yeah. It's just like if you have a really security conscious work, uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So you just hardwire in and then you can uh, no, no, no. I got I got them to create us an external Wi-Fi that we use specifically for testing this. But uh, so basically what you do is you long press on Android, you long, long press on the Wi-Fi, and then you hit modify network config. What you do is you just point it to your computer. So you look at your Wi-Fi's IP address, and you put it in there. And then you put your port, which is always 8888, uh, 48s. Uh, and base, you could change the port in the settings. But basically, what that does is starts the communication to your computer. The second step is if you want to see HTTPS stuff, uh, I'm, I always go way over. So if you want me to stop, let me know. But uh, you, if you want to do HTTPS stuff, um, you actually have to install a certificate. So they actually just upgraded their process. So if you, inst if you install the latest version, which you should, um, there, there's a website you go to, and it automatically downloads this, this certificate to your phone. So um, that's like that. That it's 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 probably a bad idea. <laughs> and it, but you, the good thing about is Android. It's a, it's a root C A. Don't worry. Guys. The, the good thing is is, is Android tells you your network might be monitored, yeah. and iOS I think has something similar to that. I don't know, but. Uh, uh, that's 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 really interesting, um, and basically getting this up is kind of a pain in the ass. So I, I have a setting on the next slide. So basically, make the steps tips for getting it set up. <coughs> make sure you have the latest version because they actually just changed the way their SSL certificates work. So um, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So you you have to you have to go to a website now. So uh, which is actually it's smoother. It's just different. So I wasn't expecting it. So just make sure you have the latest version. And then um, in order to get SSL to be actually de decrypted after you get the certificate installed on your device, is you just uh, the easiest way is to do star dot star, which star the beginning star is your um, domain, the second star is sh your port. So that's the easiest way. It'll just decrypt everything. Um, <laughs> Open you up a little bit. But <laughs> I should change that back. <laughs> I, I, I'm not talking about security. Okay, if you want to talk okay. to security, go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> you know a guy that'll tell you about it. Uh, so basically, there's a lot of weird qu weird issues you'll have with getting it to show up sometimes. So basically, it's all common stuff that you got to do. Kill and reopen the app, see if it works. If that doesn't work, kill and reopen Charles. If that doesn't work, restart your phone. So that's like, like Cox? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and generally, and generally if, if, if you do these steps and it doesn't show up still, you probably set up it, something wrong. And you deleted your certificate or, or something. Uh, yeah. But, but, but you know, it's kind of funny. You, you, you forget to do these steps sometimes. So <laughs> it's just nice to know. Also, the, the iOS simulator, uh, what, what that does is it um, actually 
Uh, they have a, a button here because they like iOS people, I guess. And they have it, so basically, there's just a button that you click to install it to the open simulator. So you open up your simulator, you click that button, and it, and it, it uh, just theoretically works. You might have to do that troubleshooting steps of restarting stuff. But uh, that theoretically just, it, it does work. But the problem with iOS is there's like 15 different emulators, depending on what size you choose, uh, simulators, I mean. So basically, you have to do that often. Uh, it's kind of a little annoying unless you choose the same one or you keep it open all the time. I don't know if it deletes it after you close it, but I, I notice I have to do this a lot for some reason. Um, let me you have that setting set in your simulator that says like delete all data and restart fresh. Every time you restart, I bet you that's what occurs. There's like one Possibly. Like save it, so like if you install an app, it's there when it restarts and all that. Well, we the, the apps, no, no, the apps are still there right. for sure. So okay. it, it might be just because I'm choosing different s simulators every time. Um, no. Sorry. No, 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 go ahead. I don't so, sorry, really have anything in specific. The simulator, are you using Charles just for the bandwidth limited, limitation or? Uh, I use it for every. I like to use simulators and emulators over <laughs> devices and just eventually test on devices because I find it easier to see stuff. So I use it to monitor network traffic, uh, see if I'm doing anything crazy in network requests. Uh, you can log your network requests, but it's, it's, it's really hard to read if you're logging stuff, especially well with both, and iOS and Android. You know, I log it, but you can't read that. And, and also, you could be doing extra, uh, extra like image requests and stuff like that. And like, you know, this is a way to make sure maybe your, your image caching is working. Like lots of stuff that this is really useful to just monitor. Um, and just to wrap up, so I don't go too long, is uh, there's a free trial. This isn't free, unfortunately, uh, but basically it's fifty dollars to purchase to have a um, have it on one device. So it's kind of you know strict in that, but. I don't know if they block you if you try to do it on multiple devices. I don't know. I haven't tried that yet, but um, I definitely recommend checking it out. You have a free trial. It, it'll work forever, but it, I think it boots you out after 30 minutes. So it's like one of those things where it'll boot you out. So it'll, you know, if you just use it rarely, you can use the free trial. But um, but I definitely recommend purchasing it because it's just it's useful if you're just doing security checks or checking if you're doing them. Um, like I found that I was doing. Uh, on the travel and transport app that we're doing, w I was doing like uh, probably ten extra requests for weather that I didn't need to be doing. So like uh, you know, it's just useful to to know to to know and optimize. It's useful for optimizing your app as well. So does anybody have any specific questions on this? Yeah, uh, have you used the <coughs> remote conditioner? Oh uh, yeah, a little bit. On on I, on on the Mac or. Uh, you mean like through the simulator? No. So like there's, I'm using the Wild. Like last time it was like kind of a, a, a settings preferences plugin. But I was kind of pissed because it like slowed the entire Mac down. So if I wanted to simulate Sprint with their awesome network. I, like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, kind of stop. I don't know how exactly the simulator emulators work. Were, were you using a simulator emulator? Yeah. So the, so the uh, network. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's down your entire network connection? Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't realize that. But I mean, also, oh, but, on, but on the phone, you actually can set it up and say, you know, I'm going to Wi Fi with Simulate Edge or. Oh. Yeah, I, 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 I actually don't think I've ever tried it on a simulator, but, but the simulator uses the uh, Mac proxy, so I assume everything goes slow, but I don't know. Right. Uh, yeah. I know there are, I was just talking to Gabe today, and he was, or yesterday, and he was talking about he was doing some conditioning stuff, and he was using something like this, like a proxy to condition it, and apparently that really screws iOS up when you slow the network connection down outside of it when it's on Wi-Fi. Yeah. Because it doesn't, ex it expects a good connection it through Wi-Fi. It's all jacked up. Yeah, it gets all kind of You can long. do it for specific URLs, for specific domains using Charles. Oh, okay. Uh, if you yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, that's a good point. You can. Set up. <coughs> um, somewhere in here. Also, they 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 moved this um, just they they moved the uh, proxy settings for SSL to here rather than proxy settings. So 
If you see documentation that says to go to proxy settings for SSL, it's actually here now, just, just so you know. Um, but uh, uh, I don't know where she, if you. There was an item in that menu. Oh, that you found it? One. And, uh, yeah. There you go. Uh, I don't know if this was. So well, somewhere in here you could choose domain specific stuff. It was in the host at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's it's yeah. I guess that would that would probably solve your problem if you had a domain specific uh, um, s slowness. It's also nice if you want to test your security, you should be able to run this and not see your stuff and not mess with your things. <laughs> yeah, I'm server, paranoid now. Theoretically. <laughs> theoretically. I like start doing cert pinning and everything else. Yeah, it's really interesting just to go through your apps or just go through other apps. Like let's yeah, if you're just co if you if you're copying another app. And you just well, do something very similar, and you you, you just want to like look through how their how their network requests work and what data they're returning, and how like you know you could also in Android completely decrypt uh, APK too. Um, so in general, you could get everybody's source code. So in general, you can do whatever you want. But this is an easy way to look at all network requests. Yeah, if you ate, if you did a just, all you would have to do here is security pin. If you actually pinned your certificate yeah. in your app. This would work because it would only accept your certificate and only your certificate. But there may be a way to install your certificate on this though. That would be the best security thing. Yeah. I think. I think. I th with it, with it. And then you could put your. I, th I, th you, I think you can do your certificate in here somewhere. Right. So then you could actually test and still have it pinned. Yeah. yeah. And still have the security. Nobody else would be able to decrypt, or you'd still wouldn't be able to do man in the middle. Of the yeah, because because even if you, I would imagine that you would have your serial whatever ID or whatever it is the certificate that you're that you're pinning. Mm -hmm. um, that this person can go into code and actually change it. A hex editor. Or mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, somebody could still, yeah. But then somebody Don't has access the to it. The difference there is somebody would have access to that device to man in the middle. Like, man in the middle, what's dangerous about it is that you don't know that it's happening. Nobody has access to your device. If I was going to change your hex code on your device, I need access to it in some way, shape, or form, which there's a number of attacks to do that, too. But People could still theoretically poke at your API, but yeah. couldn't, I couldn't just hijack Mark's Snapchat. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is it pretty straightforward to change proxy settings on iOS? Uh, yeah, it's like, it's actually easier than Android. Android's a little more complex, but basically you just go into your Wi-Fi settings. There's a uh, a box for proxy. You just check cool. it, and then uh, you just enter in your IP and your uh, port. Um, but yeah, on Android it's a little more confusing. Uh, there's articles on it, but basically you have to long press on the the Wi-Fi, and then it gives you a button for advanced options, and then you enter in your uh, IP and port. Uh, yeah, I think we should have a security night at some point in time. Of it's <laughs> yeah, like yeah. That sounds that sounds okay with me, but you know nobody wants to hear me talk every week, every month. <laughs> so. Like I said, but we have there's a couple people that work for some security companies that do penetration testing and stuff. That yeah. Get in to talk about that again. There's actually a website. You know, it's interesting about decrypting the APKs. Is there's actually a website you could drop your APK in it, and just gives you all the files. You don't even have to do all the command line stuff. It's actually really nice. <laughs> Get all the resources. All yeah. The source files, yeah. Everything. I had a question about Charles. Um, does it allow you to save your network requests? Yes. I don't. I never actually done it, but I'm pretty sure it does. Uh, and you can save lots of stuff it's in here. You can do lots of stuff in here that I like. It's actually crazy. I thought that was like, like it's it's it, this is like one of those applications that like they just do whatever their, their clients want. Like there's like if if you look in here, there's like an insane amount of settings that there's like I use probably a third of what this application could do. You 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 can you can get uh, like the local IP, which is actually kind of tricky though, because I actually ran into a, uh, an issue. So if you have your Ethernet and your Wi-Fi plugged in to the same thing, it might give you your Ethernet, and you ne it needs to be your Wi-Fi. So, you know, jerk, you didn't give me the right thing that I wanted, but. I should tell you EN0, EN1. <laughs> <laughs> What's upsetting now is, do you know Mac changed EN0 to Wi-Fi? It's no longer your, because they don't put Ethernet ports on them by default. So now EN0 is your Wi-Fi by default, and EN1 is. Really? Yeah. I was trying to I was trying to monitor my own traffic and couldn't figure out why nothing was going across the port because it was going to EN one. I figured it was Wi-Fi and it was actually not. 
So any more questions? This is definitely something you should use though. Like, like I, I usually talk to people about it and they're like, uh, I don't know, like, and then you actually use it and it's freaking amazing. Like you definitely should at least try it out and then you know, you, you just l you learn like so much more about your application that you didn't know. I think about your device too. I mean, just stuff right yeah. in the background. Yeah. <laughs> it's really interesting. You know, your, your, your phone tells you like things that are using a lot of network. Uh, but you know, it's just, it's still really interesting in, in general. IOS. What? Not if you're on iOS, it doesn't. Oh. They don't, well, they don't want to give you that kind of information. Oh, they don't tell you what apps use your network? They, they just start telling you what apps use your battery. Oh, OK. Really? Yeah. Wow. No, it's something. No, it's something really weird about Android is like, if you request like location like a million times, what it does is it puts that into like Android services and it doesn't show that your application is requesting it a million times, which I find is funny. <laughs> it's like it's like I wish they gave you a way to to like expand that out because I my application for uh, you know that's similar to Tinder I requested the location like an insane amount and I'm like draining people's batteries and it's like <laughs> and it's like and it's and it just shows up in, in uh, you know the Android services and I'm like I wish I knew how much I was using comparative to everybody else like that would be nice like as a developer. Uh, all right, guys. So if you have more questions for David, we can do it. I don't want to keep people if people are, are running late, but obviously David's not going anywhere, so <coughs> feel free to ask more questions, whatever. If you want to get another drink, have him with a drink until Mike decides he's going to throw us all out. So, uh, <coughs> but we'll have some more time. So, if there's some more pizza in there, have some more pizza, ask some more questions, have another drink. Uh, cool. Thanks a lot. Yeah.